I'm Holly and this is Wild Blessings Teaching Tuesday. Welcome, I'm so glad you're here. Um, this is gonna be a really interesting class. We're gonna be seeing spring and also seeing the moon. So um, I hope you stick with me and um, those of you that are here live, I'm so happy you are. I wish I could see who you are. In case if you ever see any names, let me know who they are. Okay. Um, but we're really, I'm really excited to share this topic because it's so fascinating to me. Right now, I always start my class with herbing around. And what I'm dealing with right now is a spruce tree. And look at these little uh, edible tips. They're so tasty and flexible and meristematic. They're growing. They feel like a koosh ball. Remember those? And uh, they're really high in vitamin C. And they also are pretty tasty. So they're so tasty that um, Bonnie and I are going to have them in our salad for lunch. So they're really um, tender, and do you see how prickly the older needles are? So you, you can make a tea out of that, but you would not want to eat those raw for sure. So um, anyway, that's what I'm dealing with now is just taking these off. So Bonnie, if you want to, I'll bring these over to you, and you can pull them off for our lunch. I'd appreciate it. And you just put them in this cup. All right, and then the other thing we always start with is tea time. And so today for our tea, since we're talking about fermentation and preserving the wild harvest, the wild spring harvest, um, I wanted to show you a fermented drink called kefir. And so this is water kefir, and we'll be doing a class on this. So I'm not going to explain how to make it. Oh my gosh, it's alive. <laughs> it's going to make a mess. Oh, hold on. I'm going to go do this at the sink. I hope you all have been fermenting uh, foods this week. Uh, this would have exploded if I hadn't refrigerated it. Okay, there we go. Woo! It's pouring out. I'm going to make some for Bonnie. Jace, do you want some? This one's for you, Jace. So um, it's kind of like a soda, but it's good for your gut. And um, is, it, is it good? Does it taste good this time? Yes, it's like... <clears throat> Drink your apple a day, right? Because the doctors say you have an apple a day. <laughs> Only it's fermented, so it's better. Oh, yeah, it is. It's a good one. That's, a good so that's one. our tea for today. I wish I could share some with you. Thank you all for doing the Eating Wild contest. And what a, a joy that was to see the things that you all are eating and how you're um, just nailing it. And <clears throat> my challenge to you, and I heard this challenge from Mark Williams and Frank Cook when I went to my first um, Forge to Feast I don't know, 2008, was to eat wild every day. And so ever since then, I think I pretty much have, except for maybe sometimes in the winter. But um, <clears throat> so I want you to do the same thing. It's kind of part of our heritage, you know, to, to do that because our ancestors used to. So I'm going to get a sharp knife and um, work on our cooking demonstration. So while I cut off these roots, these are wild onions. Here's the chive part at the top. I got these yesterday at the Todd Island Park. What you doing, bud? Hi. Come on. All right, here's my foraging basket. It's full of violets and spring beauties and wild onions and phlox and Japanese knotweed and some mystery plants and I'm excited. Hey, buddy. He had fun in the river. Um, it has kind of a little bit of a hard outside crust, so I like to just kind of peel that part off so I can get to the tender bulb inside. And then um, it's just kind of common sense. So if something is too gnarly, then you're not going to eat it unless you're going to cook it. Now this is going to be fermented. And so last week we fermented sauerkrauts, and I've been so enjoying eating sauerkraut. And the reason why we want to ferment our food is because it's like pre-digesting the food, and it makes it so much easier for our digestive system to consume, and it makes our gut flora, the balance, so it's so important that we have the good bacteria in there, the lactobacilli. So if you want to learn more about fermentation, go to my class from last week where we talked about it for an hour. And so it's just so powerful. This is the way people used to preserve their food before we had refrigerators. So this is the way it's been done for, for a lot, forever. 
So what I recommend doing after you get this hard part out is just popping it into a jar like this. And then I made a brine on the stove. And the brine is simply one tablespoon of sea salt. And you don't want to ever, ever use table salt because that only has sodium chloride, which is actually what uh, is, is horrible. It's, it's so bad for you. It's a very strong, um, very, very strong chemicals. And so what you want is as many minerals as you can get. And I like Redmond sea salt because it has 84 minerals, which our body needs. So. I'm not going to do these while you're all sitting here watching me because we have a lot to talk about today. But I wanted to show you how you just get rid of the root, root hairs and you want to get rid of this outside um, crusty part to get to the tender inside. And after you're done that, wash them off again. I already washed them, believe it or not, and throw them in. And then you take the hot brine water and pour it over the top. If you want to season your pickled onions, you can put some peppercorn, or you can put some juniper berries, you can put bay leaf, whatever you want. I'm simply gonna add a little bit of peppercorn because that's the only seasoning I want to this. Um, so, get the idea. Then when you're done with that, it's got the, the sea salt in it and the water, and you just leave it on the counter for two, three weeks, four weeks, whatever, and it will start to ferment and come alive. So, while we're talking about fermenting, uh, I want to show you this beautiful acorn sourdough bread that Bonnie and I get to have for lunch. So does Jason. <clears throat> and <clears throat> sourdough is another way of really healthy bread. Bread tends to not be all that good for you. But the sourdough, this is the starter, is alive. You can see those little bubbles in there. And so it's already kind of, it's digested. It's eas more easily digestible. And it breaks down the proteins and um, gluten and stuff and so it, it actually is a bread that's good for you and then because I'm wild <laughs> it's made out of acorn flour from last year when I harvested chestnut oaks which are my favorite acorns to work with because they are not as tannic and they're not as bitter and they don't take as much leaching to get them ready to flower up and use. So um, we'll talk about acorns in the fall, <clears throat> but I just wanted to show you that because I had a freezer full of acorns, I still do, um, you can make flour out of that anytime and then make an amazing bread or use it for nut butters or whatever nut brittles that you want with, uh, with the acorns. So this is um, fermented and we have the sauerkraut that we were making and today we're making pickles. So I'll just show you some other pickles that I've been working with is uh, cattail pickles. And we'll be making those when we teach about cattail and we'll do a whole hour befriending cattail because that is such an amazing gift. It's called the supermarket of the swamp. And here's purslane pickles and we'll be making those in July. This is all from last year. And those, this is all I have left because we love them so much. And those are high in omega threes, which is crazy awesome. And these are my favorite. These are the milkweed pickles. And these shoots are coming up soon to a pasture or a field near you. Hopefully you've been putting milkweed seeds on your property because you want to eat that plant in every stage, pretty much. All right, the early shoots make delicious pickles. <clears throat> so I think I made this one into a bread and butter pickle because Jason prefers that over dill pickle. But this year I'm going to be making dill pickles because I like that too. I'll make both. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I will. And of course, I'm making, um, still working on the apple cider vinegar created from just apples. Okay, so um, I'll give you some recipes at wildblessings.com on some of my favorite pickle recipes, along with my fermented recipes. But um, I'll do this, actually Bonnie and I can do this later. And then we'll, we'll have these pickling for next week to show you that it'll have bubbles in it and it'll be alive, just like these other sauerkrauts. Thank you for sharing all the things that you've been cooking and eating that are wild. I have been so blown away. Cindy, I wish you could come over and make those dandelion dumplings with me because that just looked crazy awesome. Um, wow. <laughs> I was amazed. Um, the Wentz, they got morel mushrooms, which I'm so jealous. Um, so if anyone gets any morels this season, they're out now, so you should be looking for them. I want you all to get one. I'm always looking, but I never seem to find them. 
but they're so delicious. So it was exciting to see that you all shared a breakfast with morels and branch lettuce and violets, scones, and oh my word, I it was awesome. I think you're going to awesome. show a picture of that later, aren't you? I will. So I just wanted to just thank you all for participating. Um, so I don't know about you all, but we've been eating wild every day, and it just makes me feel so alive and so excited. Every single day we have a Japanese knotweed smoothie, and as long as chocolate is in it, Jason doesn't care what I put in. True. True. Okay. To share some things with you that are on my counter. Um, red buds are still out for the no one and the pickin'. And I think it's fascinating that these are flowers that come out before their leaves. And if you've noticed, the leaves are just starting to come out and they're shaped exactly like a heart. So these make really delicious jelly and they make a really good tea. And Pamela actually is taking apple flowers and red bud flowers and she's drying them to use them for winter tea. So it's kind of like bringing the spring into the winter months. Um, I, I'm excited about this. I just found them this morning. These are edible, even though this is a poisonous plant. So we're going to probably do a whole hour on poke because this is what kept the the South alive during the Civil War was this plant. So even though it can be poisonous, it's also amazingly delicious. And the early leaves are like velvety asparagus. I mean, I have, I still have some in my freezer. They are so, so good. And the stalks, these early stalks are also edible, but I've been too afraid to ever try them. So I think Jason and I will try them for dinner tonight and I'll let you know if we live. Oh, well, thanks. <laughs> But they're, if they're as good as the leaves, the early leaves, um, all right, so let me just make a caveat. Don't eat poke, please. Wait till I teach you on it, and then you can eat it, because there's, there's some serious caveats to it. God is in the details. All right, remember we talked about shoots last week and how, oops, how edible and yummy um, hosta shoots are? So when they're all rolled up like this and really tight and they're kind of firm, they make really delicious, almost like an asparagus type of a texture. But do you see how they're already opening up? So that means that Bonnie and I will have this for our lettuce for lunch. There's a reason why the deer eat hostas. Okay, and then yesterday I was walking through the woods to dig up some trilliums. And the reason why I was is because today is the fourth quarter of the moon. And there's no way I would dig up a trillium today, but yesterday I could do it and make a transplant and not have a problem. And so, and you're going to learn about that today with the moon cycles. Um, so, but while I was at it, I saw all this green briar. It's that stuff called blasphemy vine. The reason why it's called blasphemy vine is because it just, it grows up the trees and it chokes out all the other growth and it's just got thorns on it and it makes you trip and it's got these horrible rhizomes. It's edible though, so if you can't beat it, eat it. And the very tips are super, super, super yummy. So this is gonna go in our salad today too. And we'll put some Japanese knotweed in too, just for the heck of it. And then I wanted to share with you that, um, I've never told you about the evening primrose root, but it is, it's only edible in the beginning of the second year. And we'll talk about that when we talk about biennials. Last thing I'm going to talk about are spring beauties. Um, so these are an ephemeral, a spring ephemeral, and so they're they're kind of gone. But I got to capture these three little tiny tubers, and I was reading how Yule Gibbons had an entire field of these, and usually they're so beautiful that you don't want to dig them up. But they were going to put a garden shed there, and so they it's like. It was going to be dug up anyway. So they ate these every day for two weeks, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they're like little potatoes. And they're listening to him reading, I should have it to read to you, what he said about how delicious these are. I'm thinking, i got to try that. So even though the flowers are now gone, they're ephemeral, um, they're spring beauties, the, the little bulbs are there. So just dig one. Well, you won't know what it looks like. I've got it in my slideshow, and I'll show you. So that's exciting. And then the last thing I want to show you that's on my counter is the dandelion globe, seed globes are, um, <laughs> they're everywhere right now. And so um, I can never pass them without kicking them to spread the life. 
but I also have started taking a little um, medicine jar and putting, taking the whole head and just sticking it into the jar and then just pulling off all of the seeds into the jar because I want to collect as many, especially from really healthy, happy looking dandelions in a good spot where there's no pollution or car exhaust. So collect your dandelion seeds, put them in your lawn. People used to rip out grass so that the dandelion and other edible weeds could thrive and so that's a good idea. Actually, I kind of like my grass, but I love my weeds and I like them where I want them. So you can put them where you'd like them to be. And that's going to be, you can't beat the nutrition of a dandelion.